Hello, my name is Jessica Lohman. And I'm Erin Schistler. And I'm Lauren Gary. And tonight we will be presenting you a presentation based on the future, the, um, the future, past, and present of vitamins. object here on this earth that we live in today. Most objects seem really simple, okay? But what we've learned to do in big history, and what you should probably do when you look at ordinary things, is to take a deeper look. When you take a deeper look, you realize that these things may seem more complex, and the story behind them may seem much more interesting. As we see here, vitamins are not only essential to earth, but they also represent the increasing complexity that our history has represented. So how many of you have ever taken a vitamin? So vitamins are micronutrients, and they are essential to human life. Um, they come in two different forms, chewy forms for little kids, and pill forms like you see up here. Um, they are essential to life, and there are two different types, types of vitamins, fat-soluble and water-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed through your fat and are stored in your liver. Water-soluble vitamins are run through your bloodstream and are given out, the nutrients are given out to your body, and when you're done, you, um, I don't know how to say this gracefully, you expel, you expel them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the Big Bang. Now the Big Bang, 13, imagine 13.7 13 billion years ago, there was nothing on the earth, just darkness pretty much. And then suddenly, just an explosion which pretty much changed our whole history even before it started. Everything was created, like everything in the universe, like water and earth, books, school. <laughs> um, it occurred in less than a second, and it's just, it's, it started as something so small, a small pretty much a burst that just expanded for like a long time. Actually, it expanded 380,000 years after it. It didn't expand right after. And then it cooled down and became pretty much our Earth. Okay. So, I bet a lot of you as little kids like made wishes upon the big shiny stars in the sky. Okay. So, some people's questions is, how were those stars made? Where did they come from? Alright. These stars actually have a pretty interesting story. Okay. So, we have something called Goldilocks conditions on our Earth. Goldilocks conditions are the conditions that make it a perfect environment for complex things to form. And we also have some key ingredients to form stars. Now, the Goldilocks conditions for the formation of stars included tiny variations in the density of matter, and it included gravity being able to pull everything together so it rose to temperature. <laughs> okay, we also have the key ingredients. The key ingredients for stars include hydrogen, helium, fusion, strong nuclear forces, and gravity. Stars led to very increasing complex ideas in our society today. So have you ever wondered what, how stars impact you? Well, stars led to increasing complexity by creating new things such as galaxies, clusters, and superclusters. But they also created new elements. Some of the heavy element, elements, like iron, are created during the life of the star. But all the other elements are created during the death of the star in what's called a supernova explosion. And in these explosions, the building blocks of the universe are created. Next is early life forms. And early life forms, because Earth was once a really dangerous place. Actually, it was 4.6 billion years ago. If we lived on it, we would not even be able to survive. Um, but later, we finally got a more stable environment that led to early life forms like us and fish and trees. Um, but the things that let it happen was pretty much we had a rocky planet, which was really important to our environment. We also had liquid water, which we all know we can't live without. And we had enough energy to make us be able to support life and live on Earth. So this is what one of the first life forms looked like, and it's hard to believe that this is what life came from. So 3.5 billion years ago, we see evolution start to take place. 2.5 billion years ago, eukaryotes started to develop. 1 billion years ago, multi-celled organisms started to develop and form. And 500 million years ago, our brains started to take place. 
475 million years ago, life moved from the water to the land, and 250 million years ago, mammals came into being. Okay, so there obviously are some things that separate us from the multicellular organisms you just saw. Those things look pretty weird, and we have several processes that are new and unique to the world of living organisms. These four qualities include reproduction, homeostasis, homeostasis, adaption, and metabolism. Okay, so as you all probably know, reproduction is when organisms make copies of themselves. Homeostasis is when we are able to adjust to the environment around us and it helps us survive. Adaption is when we are able to adapt to the new changes and make ourselves sustainable to the challenges of life. And metabolism is how we feel ourselves. What do vitamins do for the body? Like, why do we need them? Well, they play a major role in our bodies to make us be able to live so we can get the nutrients we need. They also, we have water soluble and fat soluble, which we need both of them to live, not just one. We also, they have different effects on the body, which is really important. And now we're just going to go through a few of our um, vitamins so you can see different kinds. Okay, so one of the most well-known fat-soluble vitamins is vitamin A. Okay, so as every vitamin does, vitamin A has some benefits to it. Some of these include eyesight, which it helps our eyesight. It regulates our immune system. It strengthens our stomach lining. It supports um, growth of bones. And it gives us healthy teeth. Okay, now, as all things in life, you usually do, there are some setbacks, either from deficiency or too much of the vitamin. Deficiencies may result in night blindness, dry eyes, and improper tooth and bone growth. Too much of vitamin A can also result in some not so good circumstances, such as headache, nausea, loss of appetite, and loss of hair. The next bet soluble vitamin we're going to look at is vitamin D. So some benefits of vitamin D, it helps promote bone growth, it helps promote healthy skin, and it helps maintain a healthy weight. However, there are a lot of setbacks and deficiencies. One deficiency is rickets, which makes the bones soft and easy to break, and the bones become brittle. If you have too much vitamin D, this can lead to birth defects, nausea, kidney damage, and digestive tract disorders. The next vitamin is vitamin E, which is also a fat-soluble vitamin. Like all the other vitamins we've gone through, it has benefits, such as it reproduces cells, it prevents blood clots, it protects lungs from air pollution, and it protects the body's tissue, and it even maintains red blood cells. Some setbacks, though, are that the deficiencies that they have reproductive failure, muscle dystrophy, which is the weakness of muscle or the loss of muscle tissue, and premature aging, which is not good. Okay. Well, yeah. all right. So the vitamin we will be talking about today is vitamin K. Some of the benefits of vitamin K include prevents infections and slows our bleeding. Vitamin K also aids bone mineralization. Now, as you're starting to see a pattern here, there are some setbacks. Okay, with deficiencies of vitamin K, we have increased risk of heart attack and stroke. So now we're going to move on to the water-soluble vitamins. The first one we're going to look at is B1. So the benefits of vitamin B1 is it helps remove carbon dioxide from the body. It also converts carbohydrates to fat and helps prevent nerve and memory loss. Some setbacks are bear, beriberi, which was discovered in 1884 by a Japanese doctor, and this leads to damages in the nervous system and can even lead to death. And some other deficiencies of vitamin B1 are fatigue, weight loss, muscle weakness, your heart rate slows, loss of reflexes, confusion, and depression. Next um, water-soluble vitamin is B12. Now the benefits of B12 is that it helps build amino acids and aids their function. Um, it helps nerve communication and it aids energy reproduction and helps cell reproduction and encourages healthy complexion. The setbacks are um, that the deficiency is the lack of red blood cells, spinal damage, loss of appetite, fatigue, dizziness, and even delusions. Okay, vitamin C. 
vitamin C is also a pretty common, well-known vitamin. All right, vitamin C strengthens our bones, helps bind muscle tissue, prevents bruising, and supports healthy metabolism. It also reduces the rush of adrenaline, which can help with stressful situations. Um, and it can make you a little less stressed. Okay, setbacks. Okay, we have setbacks. From a deficiency of vitamin C, we can see that we can develop scurvy, which is most common in sailors, um, hemorrhages, anemia, and poor wound healing. So you're probably wondering where you can find all these vitamins. Well, most likely, likely you eat these vitamins daily in fruits and vegetables. Vitamin A is common in carrots and oranges. B1 can be found in pumpkins or radishes. Other B vitamins can, can be found in broccoli, bananas, strawberries, eggs, milk. C can be found in pears and grapes. D can be found in fish and cheese. Um, e can be found in peas and squash. It's just a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. Vitamins also work together because they can't just be alone. It's like a team of vitamins. Um, they help prevent certain cancers like prostate cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, other can skin cancer too. Um, they also help fight sickle cell disease, dementia, diabetes, and heart disease. Okay, vitamins now, which are probably a little more interested in. Okay, so vitamins today. Vitamins have become a multi-billion dollar business, okay? That's pretty big. I mean, the people are making good money. Okay. Alright, so vitamins are especially recommended nowadays for pregnant women, especially vitamins such as folate. Now, people today, instead of just using vitamins as a main source, they also take them to prevent illnesses. This has led to an increased use of vitamins in today's society. So now we're going to see how well you've been listening. Yeah. If you think the statement is true, put a thumbs up. If you think it's false, thumbs down. First question, the two types of vitamins are fat-soluble and water-soluble. Up or down? You would be right. <laughs> All right. Next question, round two. Okay. The four new characteristics of us mammals are reproduction, metabolism, homeostasis, and perspiration. That would be a thumbs down. Congratulations. <laughs> Night blindness is a true side effect of vitamin A deficiency. Next one's pretty hard. This one's getting a little tricky. It'll get tricky. Rickets makes the bones stronger and more durable. <laughs> 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 Yes. 
What group of individuals are the most susceptible to the B vitamin deficiency? Reword that question. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that alcoholics are the most susceptible to B vitamin deficiencies? Sure. I say yes. Oh. Yeah. Or vegetarian? Yeah. Not so much. There's lots of B vitamins in vegetables. Maybe the liver. Why is that? Why is that? Why are you saying that? Like, oh, alcohol, alcoholism just it decreases their eating. Oh yes, yeah. loss of appetite. Affects their, yeah, so affects their liver. And you're not getting as much food. Agreed. Makes the liver incapable of processing the effects on the Um. So could you once again explain to me how stars and vitamins are connected? Mm. What's up with that? Well, through the dying stars, they created the elements of the universe. Okay. And the elements come together to create vitamins. Actually, it's like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Those are all combined in, L in like vitamins. Iron, calcium, and magnesium, potassium. As many of you know, uh, we've been enrolled in the history course this year. Um, throughout the history, we've learned to take a deeper view, like I introduced um, in the beginning, deeper view at the simple things. And you can see by looking back in the past that if we wouldn't have had stars, basically our whole universe, we would not be here. And we are the people who invented vitamins, we are the people who buy them and have made them the multi-billion dollar business they are today. Any more questions? <laughs> Alright, um, so each vitamin, I like noticed that it's like, they had the good things and then they had like the deficiencies, but the deficiencies like contradicted like the good things, why was that? Like do you guys know what I mean? Like because yeah. one of them was like you'd get good eyesight, but then oh. you'd have night blind lips. Um, not everyone is vitamin deficient. Sometimes your body just can't process um, the vitamins, or if you have a lack of vitamins, like you're not getting the nutrients you need, that's when the deficiencies come in. Another thing with that is, I don't know if you were specifically clear, but those were symptoms if you do not get enough of the vitamin. So if you're not maintaining enough of that particular vitamin, those could be the effects. After doing this research, would you uh, suggest that an average person take vitamins? Or who, who do you think would be the best group to take vitamins? Like, should I take vitamins? I don't take them, but should I? Well, vitamin, you can take vitamin supplements. Vitamins, most of your vitamins are found in a healthy diet, like in fruits and vegetables. So most people, some people take vitamins, like, if they have bad eating health, like habits, they think that the vitamin will help their body. When truly the vitamins found in the foods are actually what they the major role in the body. As almost all commercials say, just ask your doctor. <laughs> yes. but I have a question to build on Ms. Thomas's question. So for instance, you know, learning what you have about vitamins, say if you weren't feeling well, would there be now certain vitamins that you might choose to take to help you say if you were developing a cold, say the week of a bit presentation? I guess you could take some vitamins, like vitamin A or vitamin C to help you. Yes. Perhaps. Vitamin A supports the I agree. Interesting. I think there's some of you. It's a great message. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Or questions? <laughs>
And we have some candy to represent our vitamins. So gummy vitamins like gummy bears or like 